Now, Jang and Jalo brought to you by the fabulous SABC Education. Now, the other day I was sitting with traffic and got back on Pandle I was so amazed by all the natural things I could see, even in this hectic city of each other. Right, Jay, I don't see. Bekoni, Tata, long stretching fields of grass, flowers, even someone walking their dog. And I thought, wow, SA is such a diverse place. We are begging you, Ganyi. Because now we are actually quite famous for Indoni biodiversity here too. From wild animals in the Kruger to ancient plants and deep sea creatures. Mm -mm. So all this natural stuff falls under biodiversity? I will in Shalom, Ganyi. See, I go and 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 Coming up next on TOMZ, find out what the Texas system is and how it's used to classify different species. Come along and check out the creatures that crawl and sail through life, giving people goosebumps. We go out on the ocean and we learn more about shark nets and the conservation of other incredible sea animals. We discover the wonder of biomes and how SA is so lucky to have many of them. Pick up your smartphone or tablet to get some seriously helpful apps. And take notes when our guests share some inspirational advice. Okay, so with nani animals, near plants, and everything in between is classified, right? But your routine, nothing can be. Well, I know where you fit in. <laughs> Kidding. I suppose it's on Hey, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Are you fresh? Yeah. Are you 100? I'm okay. Okay, cool. So where are we? We're in Greenside High School. What's so special about Greenside High School? It's so diverse, you know, mm -hmm. all types of races and yeah. Okay, cool. What's your name? I'm Palisa Kupega. Okay, Palisa Benangfunukiana, what is the Texas system? The Texas system, um, I remember doing this in uh, um, It's a way of classifying different organisms. Mm -hmm. According to my understanding, I'd like to believe that the Texas system is the system used to uh, distinguish the different types of organisms. Oh, Texas system, mm -hmm. I think it has something to do with classif the classification of uh, different organisms. Mm -hmm. In which natural organisms do humans fit in? Mammals. I think it has something to do with Codata. Codata or something? I'm not sure. Okay, cool. So, Funikana, what is bio? Biome? Yeah. Isn't it the uh, different types of plants? Mm -hmm. Biome. It's like different kinds of like trees and plants in a place. So, let's say, I'm going to get biodiversity to describe the wide range of species that's in our upper m Now, this can include the ways in which species are different in their genetics and the variety of species in an area, as well as the way their habitats are unique. Mm, I mean, Taba Akonji, humans are very different from ants, who are also different from dogs and plants. We also don't live in the very same kinds of places. In Shalok, and Yeolondoke, scientists made a system where they could put all the species into different classes. Lendoke, Yabangada, to keep track of their special features while where they fit into the bigger picture. The system gets the Misa Texa. Now up here you will find three groups, namely Bacteria, Acaria, and Eukarya. Now okay, I'm to fall in the last group. Eukarya group also includes the four kingdoms, namely protists, animals, plants, and fungi. They can all be put in the same bucket because their cells contain a nucleus. Now all these different species and areas on Earth. They have to be kept in balance to prevent one species from throwing nature out of order. My name is my creatures are to in the corner, and it's time to meet some of the ones who will completely freak Ubongi out. Oh, yes, don't see your Nyansi, yes, Yonke Indo guys that slithers and crawl just gives me goosebumps. <laughs> dangerous creatures and I'm telling you touch down during the Ushaka Marine so for now about to get like in your are they dangerous or not me and you need to find out this so right now come with me we inside the buildings hanging out with some snakes so cool my good I'm a dangerous creatures are doing and how you guys doing good how are you welcome to TOMZ Oh, nice to, thanks for having us. So here we've got two very different snakes. We have a ball python, yes. and with James, we have a born slug. So okay. this guy, being a tree-dwelling animal, he would feed on animals like lizards, geckos, um, chameleons, which is one of their favorite prey items, yep. and also young birds. Um, an animal like this would feed on mainly ground-dwelling animals, because they're not generally found in trees, mm -hmm. and they will feed on rodents on the ground, small animals like monkeys, etc. Okay. 
Okay, so, so tell me, is every snake dangerous? You asked the question dangerous. Okay. So being venomous mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily mean That's dangerous. dangerous. Okay. And, um, James Bunslang is a very good example. Um, has probably the most potent venom of yeah. any snake in the world. But as you can see, he's such a calm animal and has such a placid demeanor. So your chances of being bitten by one of these snakes is minuscule. Okay. You do get some snakes that are not venomous that can be very dangerous. Okay. So a good example would be the ball python's bigger cousins, the reticulated python, um, also your anacondas. Mm -hmm. They're not venomous, but they're extremely large and extremely powerful. So they can use their muscular bodies to constrict and to cause harm to human beings. However, they do not look at us as a source of food. So our chances of being killed or harmed by one of these snakes is also very, very tiny. Let's talk about the dangerous species, right? The, the mambas. Mm -hmm. where, does, where does the venom come from? Okay, all snakes have teeth. Yeah. So fangs are specialized teeth okay. used to, de to, to deliver venom. Okay. At the roof of the mouth, the fangs are of where they live. Okay. So different types of venomous snakes have different types of fangs. Mm -hmm. So the fangs are attached to venom glands mm -hmm. via the venom duct. Mm -hmm. When the snake bites onto a prey animal, mm -hmm. he will then put pressure on his venom glands and that would move the venom along the venom duct into the prey animal. Mm -hmm. Something that's quite unique is yeah. snakes can actually control the amount of venom that they inject into the victim. Oh, so wow. The main reason that a snake has venom is to catch food. So to capture, immobilize prey. So if he just, if you got into his personal space and you didn't make him too happy and he had to give you a bite, yeah. he might not necessarily inject you with venom. We call okay. this a dry bite. Okay. So he would rather conserve his venom okay. to capture prey. Uh -huh. And that's what's really important to remember with snakes is they don't want to waste their venom on us by biting us. They'd okay. rather conserve their venom to capture their prey okay. because they need it for survival. Okay, so tell me Ngalum Chitarun. Okay, this is Bot uh -huh. and he's known as a savanna monitor. Okay. Now, these guys are all carnivorous lizards. These guys feed off things like rodents, other lizards, um, also decaying matter. Um, he might appear to be dangerous. As you can see, he's got these really sharp, sharp claws. claws. You yeah. can actually feel them if you'd like to. Yeah, so yeah. if this guy holds on to you, it could be really, really sore. Mm. Now he uses them for running very fast speeds and also for climbing. Mm -hmm. So not necessarily to harm you. Because I appreciate, tell me, what kind of dangerous creatures do you find in the ocean? So people think the sharks are the most dangerous things in the ocean. Mm -hmm. um, there are other animals that can be pretty dangerous. Yeah. So everybody knows jellyfish. There yes. are some jellyfish that can be really deadly venomous. Uh -huh. Luckily, we don't find them in South African waters. Um, you could also find animals like stonefish. Mm -hmm. The stonefish is actually the most venomous fish in the sea. What makes us think that sharks are dangerous? Um, sharks are incredibly amazing hunters. Yes. So just like on land, we've got lions and they have amazing adaptations to hunt. Yes. So do sharks. And I think the scariest thing to people would be the teeth. Yes. And his teeth are designed for, depending on the species of shark, catching the prey that he feeds off. So mm -hmm. some sharks, specialized for feeding on turtles. Some sharks are specialized for feeding on animals like seals. And some sharks feed on things like fish. Mm. Unfortunately, because tiger sharks, for example, feed on turtles, they might confuse a surfer with a, tur with a turtle or a seal for a human being. And that's why they might attack. As a result, humans are terrified of them. But reptiles are pretty cool. But when we come back, we'll take a look at another pretty intense creature who keeps surface on the toes. I'm gonna have to get into the deep blue sea to learn more about the creatures that lurk in the darkness so I can find out what a biome is. What's the boy? Charms. Charms. 
Hey da all, I'm Zanti. We are back and you are still tuned into the best side tech show. Kuluma ngani ya kulunge tio MZ Raja on SABC One. I'm Zanti for sure. Yes, with Ben Uzimba, I'm still adjusting from all the goosebumps and it's from my from the previous sections. I mean, snakes and spiders were two guys. This is too much for me. Oh, albo ngono make two sane. These crazy creatures form a very important part of our biodiversity. Every species has a place where it's important for survival. Jalo kanya and sharks are no different. Yes, we tend to associate sharks with danger because it's such an invasive animal. So it's when they actually bite someone. We are not the natural food source. In general, can you see why again? In fact, the chances of getting killed by a cow or dog are way higher than with a shark. And so, it is in our best interest to protect the food or shark. Can you see why again? In fact, the chances of getting killed by a cow or dog are way higher than with a shark. And so, it is in our best interest to protect the food or shark. Can you see why again? In fact, the chances of getting killed by a cow or dog are way higher than with a shark. And so, it is in our best interest to protect the food or shark. This part of mission is to prevent the slowly land and see how we can slow the tail shocks. But as it comes to the bazooks, it's going to be a lot more doing. I mean, we're going to have to do a lot more. We're going to have to do a lot more. Welcome to the OMZ. Welcome to the OMZ. So it's going to be like what exactly is shocks? But it was not a shocks. But in company, we have many. We have the tail. It's in the middle of 51. We're going to have to do a lot more. Ama ama shaga kutoa ngalima za bandu uliandi. Sina injelezi ningi kasi sebina sayo uglungi sa kutoa bandu banga linyo za ushaga. Okay. Enye yao amanets la wenye baboni le xeni elia on. Yes. Yes. Okay, so it's kasi alige hard na sebina sana jana la manets. But I mean ama shaga sana mazinya shop. How do you stop a shock from not while tearing the net apart? Sifi yangu alugule elini say. As as kala yangu kuti amanets la wakiwa nge. Ni amatoa na kwenye lugha kulo, and kwa tage uma kulunya uzobano kuti njobano boni lolo ande, amanet aya 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 lenga pezule moyen, kama enkaza wabambi le pants kuti abe kuma position. Ama enkaza lama pola lawa. Kama yeah sama pola zwa pezule, but ama enkaza pants kama pants kwa mans kwa wabon. Okay. Kwa tage inta nzagala kuti lama neta five hundred meters ubute ba wu, lese ba six meters ushona pants. Manje ushara wiyawa zitilu ubutu ngande za pezule or Makeleni or a pants when I think Obanjo Bangish is not a solid wall. Okay. Yes. But nonetheless, we found it effective because in the last 30 years, I can't remember the mashak nets. As far as I've been now, the fatal shark attack, gula ma gula ma protected areas because it's not the entire coast they're protected. Okay. Okay. It's just those 400 meter spaces as you saw. The biodiversity gave Banjaganya the different types of homes that plants and animals have. This can usually be described as what we call a biome. Ipayomes get the fun in cities. They are made up of different ecosystems and habitats to form a unique area with specific plants and animals. Umzans Africa ke une biomes as is plant that spread across the country. Uno bangela walendo is that there is a difference in temperature and the amount of rainfall in different areas. Etike ifumele certain types of plants to grow where others might not. Is Rania like that live off these plants can also be found in those areas. Sibo, welcome to TOMZ. Hey, great to see you and welcome to KZN, my yeah, brother. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. KZN is very hot. KZN is beautiful. Okay, cool. So let's talk about shark boarding. How do you guys plant these nets? All right, so the installations will happen mostly in the morning. And then the, the nets are rotated. Like every day, a different net is, a fresh net is being installed. Mm -hmm. The dirty one is taken out, it's taken to base. It's sorted out, it's cleaned. If it's, if it's got any tears or any damage, those are all sorted out. Okay, yeah. throughout the research and again, I and my experiments, yeah. when it comes to the animals and the, the sea life of the, the animals, yeah. so Nabant, yeah, yeah. What, what, what's the importance of it? Like in Funde I think it's very very important. Um, if you look at just basically this animal, it's a fascinating animal. Mm -hmm. We look at it, we're just seeing this, but there's so much of info inside. Mm -hmm. Now, with, with KZN and Sharksport Maritime Center of Excellence, so you've got different divisions, and the one you're referring to is research. Mm -hmm. So once the operation has installed the nets, have cleaned the nets, they found an animal that's caught there. Mm -hmm. Research already starts working. Okay. Or there are some elements, for example, capturing the animal. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing measurements of the length of it. And then it comes to research. Research, where you've got the wet lab, that's where the scientists will be sitting with the animal. Then it comes to, to the, the public area of where we do the, the dissections and educational dissections. Yeah. So the, the shark is then brought here, it will be dissected, and kids will then, kids 
and visitors from all over the country. So once it's dissected, it goes back to research. Now they've got um, the gut content. Mm -hmm. Okay, gut content is very important because you can't just say this is a dangerous shark. Mm -hmm. How do you know? Because you don't see what's inside. So mm -hmm. when you start to analyze the gut content, you know what it's been eating, mm -hmm. you know uh, pollution, for example, mm -hmm. uh, you start picking up issues of is there any disease, mm -hmm. foreign objects. I'll give you one cool one right, okay. right okay. here. This is a hard hat. Oh no. Um, I think what most likely happened here because of the harbor and so on, guys working, or it could be anywhere else, it landed up into, into the water, into the ocean, mm. and the shark looked at this here and then consumed it and ate it. Mm. The unfortunate part about the human footprint is mm. if this takes uh, space inside the shark's stomach. Let's just say a shark is supposed to eat 10, 10 liters of food. Mm. Now you've got five liters taken up by this hard head. It means that the shark is now cutting its diet. Mm. It's mm. starving itself. Mm. Mm. So I think even humans, we've got to be very careful of, of the things that we do. Once again, get the abono, but in terms of manjani, we have such a diverse country. Mm. From forests to finbos to grasslands, the vendors in Kuru, yes, they don't need any country yet. I'm by all. And Sarah Kuru and Abongsipo, and this allows many different types of species to survive on home soil. South Africa has some of the biggest varieties of wildlife, Konala and Klamini. Now, before we get now, we dive into a quick ad break. We're not going to drop us a comment. I'm going to move on to my Jero and Tom Nata. And who knows? I'm going to take now. When you to have your own virtual sanctuary for plants and animals, you can buy your own and buy diversity classification. If so, stick around if you'd like to find out. We've got all the way when it comes to insanely interesting and different creatures from snakes and monitors on land to creatures in the deep blue sea. It's time for a bit of know-how when it comes to time traveling and digital tools. The organisms on Earth have been undergoing evolution for more than 3 billion years. And during this time, many things in the fabric of nature have changed. Check this out. Around 542 million years ago, an evolutionary event, Esitigata Sibiza, it came to an explosion, Yenzek. Now it lasted for about 20 to 25 million years, during which time most animal phyla appeared. Now before Gaelic most organisms on Earth were pretty simple. But after this incredible event, a major diversification in organisms happened. When Yaga 1968, a wildlife conservationist named Raymond Dustman was the first to use the term biodiversity in a book about conservation. Whereas in Sukuke, we have a subject area called biodiversity informatics. The Biodiversity Informatics Gate uses digital tools to store information about all the different classes of animals and their characteristics. Now, deep sea expeditions have uncovered hundreds of species never classified before using a technology NJK, which can take remotely operated vehicles deep underwater. Scientists are, however, very concerned about the future of human actions on Earth, fearing that human actions that lead to things like climate change are wiping out its species as is it. So climate change is a big problem, and in some way, everybody contributes to it. But if you like to be more responsible, we might have to face the extinction of many of our important species. In Jalogaya, now in SA alone, there are many animals and insects that are in danger, like the cheetah, the African wild dog, the river and rabbit, and the blue crane bird. When I like to if you want to in the Mayako Oshin, just start by making sure that you have all the right facts with these awesome digital tools. Get the full pictures by downloading a Biodiversity is Us to your smartphone. Let players of Negeza access to 400 different animal species as well as a chance to test your knowledge with an epic quiz. It will also teach you more about the red list status of species. If traveling and having fun is more of your thing, then you have to get your hands on the MEOL. This is a biodiversity game. Lots of are around the world stopping at different continents of Bona, which plants and animals are present there. Nuguti environment yakona. For a truly South African perspective, you gotta make your way to www.sandb.org, the website from Zanti's very own Biodiversity Institute. Follow the links to everything from biodiversity in your gardens to great resources. As a congregator with my project, to our is called just as you go manje, the threat of human activity to biodiversity is a real problem. Go to get one of those seeds, which is really back on the right track. In Jalokanis, there are those who work in conservation, have great skills, quite no laws about how to manage and protect our natural environment. Yes, Indon, Jonga, Fosan. 
I've also worked in conservation, play an extremely important part in making sure that we take good care of different types of species, YA Wildlife, Abimzans. Now, there are many different short courses that you can take, or you can even go full steam and get a higher certificate in nature conservation. Now, the recommended subjects are maths and literacy, physical science, and languages. You can end up working as a field ranger, a game scout, a wildlife police officer, a senior field ranger, a surgeant, or a park ranger. Many girls' course take only one year to complete. Plus, you'll be able to get hands-on experience while training. Cool, right? Both my I'm going to someone who work in conservation get to spend a lot of time apart, isn't it? Mm-hmm, I guess it's for those people who like being outdoors. Food about to experience a new one, and the Africa and Asia is what you know about. So, let's learn again. Good about Bagashi, but I'm trying to pass part in. If you guys would like to have an amazing career and work with incredible animals like these every single day, um, science is very, very important at school, so you'll need to study a BSc and then probably do a master's degree in the field of herpetology, where you could work with reptiles and you could work with them in the field or in a facility like ours. It's a great job because you feel like you're making a big difference every single day. So I think as South African youth, we've got various opportunities in terms of the maritime industry. So that is something that you could venture out to. You could one day maybe dream of having your own tourism company that takes people out to dams, that takes people out to, to sea. Um, then there's also commercial diving. Commercial diving is, is really a gold mine. You get to travel the world in different in many places. Um, you get to see different things. Um, just to give you an idea of a commercial diver, those are the guys that fix everything that is basically underwater. If it means welding the bottom of the ship, if it means it's on an oil rig and you're welding the construction, um, it could also be hydraulics, it could be any type of repair. There's pipe works, there's pipelines that are running from country to country. Uh, so, so that is something that uh, I would really like to see more youth getting involved. Yeah, we have some physics for your social sessions. We're talking about the school man now. We're talking about Facebook now. We're talking about the social sessions. We're talking about Facebook. I'm talking about the social sessions. We're talking Today's episode inspires me a lot. It has done. See, I'm glad I'm so so. I was really just pretty. We're talking about the social sessions. That was really nice. Thumbs up to you for watching it. Your MZ. Man, you're going to be getting some jobs. I got a bit of nice con up Facebook, so we show MZ, go Twitter and show MZ underscore SABC underscore what? Yes, in the Instagram, the local con up, Tom's TV underscore SABC one. Until next time, keep tweeting. Cool guys, I hope Nila Pekasanya understand like, how to put different creatures in different categories and that protecting our species is really important. Yes, in the next time, we will see you in the comments. Yes, my mom is in the comments. Check out our next lineup for the next episode before we sign off. Bye bye. Next time on TOMZ. We meet a fertility expert from a clinic in Joe Z for some inside info on how the fertility process is helped along by science. We get the lowdown on scientific discoveries that have been made in the science of fertility research. Kwaeganoko Clockwise will learn all about how we learned all we did about the science of fertility in the past. So I was going to go now with TOMZ. Hot on a move along always being in CBS Cinet. No, and talk about SABC 1. Zanzi, 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 Zanzi,